Joining us today is Captain Valt van der Zwan, Managing Director of Roldock Shipping in the Netherlands, who will be speaking at Modular Construction and Pre-Assembled Fabrication, which takes place on the 16th to 18th of November 2010 in Perth. Hello, Valt. Many thanks for joining us today. Yes, uh, good, uh, good afternoon to you. Good morning here in Holland. First of all, can I ask, what are the key benefits of modular construction and how does Roldock fit into the equation? Well, to, uh, to my opinion, there are, um, there are various uh, reasons behind modular uh, construction and consequently uh, modular uh, transportation. Um, uh, like I said, various reasons. Uh, one of the reasons could be um, that the, the, the um, let's say, the site or the, the facility to be constructed is in a remote area where it is difficult to, to um, uh, let's say, to mobilize a lot of people for so-called stick building. And then um, modular construction and modular, modular transportation has a preference to uh, reduce the amount of people necessary, let's say, to build the, um, the facility. Another reason could be um, if it is an existing facility in a certain area, to restrict the time of a lot of workers to build modular and and, and transport the modules uh, for a quick, quicker, uh, I said it, a quicker uh, uh, turnaround time for the extension of, for example, a refinery. Another reason could be, uh, of course, uh, the labor cost in certain areas, high labor costs, probably because of the remote uh, remoteness of the area. And then it is um, uh, cheaper to build uh, the module somewhere else. Another reason could be, uh, for example, the testing of all the equipment, which is better done at the at the, uh, at the construction site than at the site where, well, let's say, the facility has to work. So, there, in my opinion, there are various reasons why uh, which, which benefits uh, modular uh, construction. Um, on the question of how Roldock fit into uh, the equation, well, that's simple. Our vessels uh, being so-called, uh, how we call them, multifunctional heavy lift uh, carriers, um, we can load in three modes. That means uh, we can uh, roll on the roll of cargo. Modules very often are too high to be lifted. Uh, so we can roll on the roll of cargo, but we also can uh, lift, and especially the, the roll on the roll of uh, facility of the vessel fits perfectly in the transport of modules. And can you run me through the SPTOF project uh, with regard to the specific challenges of loading, transportation and the discharge of modules? Yeah, well, that was a specific uh, project in that respect because these were uh, in total seven so-called furnaces and seven CV decks and uh, four pipe racks which had to be transported. And that was um, for the extension of an existing refinery. So stick built at the refinery uh, was out of the question because the refinery was at life and had to, had to, be, uh, had to keep on working. So the modules had to be, uh, had to be uh, uh, constructed uh, somewhere else. And although the transport um, distance was uh, relatively small, it was only from Thailand to Singapore, so where you could say, or where one would say, well, then you easily use a barge for transportation, uh, especially the furnaces, uh, because of the, uh, let's say, the, 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 the envelope sizes and some specific uh, uh, items uh, or items uh, characteristics of the furnace. The furnaces were 50 meters high with a center of gravity of 23 meters uh, uh, height. And uh, although the height was, uh, was very large, the width and the length of the modules, the furnaces, were relatively small, so very vulnerable pieces. And their acceleration forces was the key element of the transport. Um, this, uh, the, the, these furnaces could only be transported on a mode where minimum acceleration forces uh, would exist. And therefore, it couldn't be done by a barge. It had to be done by a vessel. And our vessels were perfectly suited for that low stability. Because we can, we can let's say, we can adjust the stability because of the uh, configuration of the vessel. So acceleration 
Russian forces on the nodules was the key was the key subject on the transportations on the pieces of the uh, SPTUF uh, project. And how do you think that modular construction will benefit Australia in the future? And how does its current rate of adoption compare with other nations around the world? Well, um, I think um, Australia will be um, very important in respect of uh, modular transportation in the future uh, because of a couple of facts. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, the LNG development. There's a lot of, uh, of gas and oil, oil and gas around uh, uh, Australia, which is planned to be developed. So that means uh, quite some uh, quite some projects are there in the years to come to be developed. And uh, so in that respect, Australia will be important. Um, and then, of course, uh, coming back on the question and answers on uh, question one, I mean. <laughs> Uh, Australia, uh, certain areas are remote, uh, difficult to, uh, to, to, uh, to mobilize people to certain areas, especially in the northern uh, part of Australia where a lot of LNG uh, uh, projects uh, are developing and will be developed. So, in fact, all these, all these examples, as mentioned before, are fitting in the, uh, in, 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 in the situation uh, of Australia. So, I think for everybody uh, in uh, Involved in in, in 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 construction and transportation of uh, modules, Australia will be very very important in the coming years. You're speaking at modular construction and pre-assembled fabrication, which takes place on the 16th to 18th of November 2010 in Perth. What will be the focus of your presentation? The focus uh, will be the uh, as an example the SPTUF uh, project. Uh, where I will focus on the philosophy behind the, the transport uh, solution in this uh, particular case, but uh, that counts for many cases. Uh, then, of course, the transportation method. Uh, of course, something about the uh, risk analysis and, uh, and safety around the transport. The engineering behind it, and uh, something about the, the uh, actual uh, execution of the job. Captain Val van der Sven, many thanks for your time today. Okay, thank you very much.